towards the next slide you can see this is a http overview uh, this is a http overview how we are going to send the uh, like a message and how we are going to get the response back this these things uh, this slide will make you to understand all these things now what's the full form of our http this is a very common viva question where you are going to give the answer the http full form will be yours hypertext transfer protocol that you have to remember don't tell that it is a transmission protocol many students used to have get confused with the transfer and the transmission word you just remember this is your hypertext transfer protocol how to remember this word you are going to transfer the message from one host to another host so remember in that way the keyword as transfer the first point says that web application layer protocol this http why it is known as your web application layer why because whenever you will type any of the website name automatically it takes as your http because it, it this http supports your web application protocols as it is going to direct all the uh, website names towards the pages that's the reason this is known as your http web application layer protocol this can be your viva question they may ask you that uh, which protocol known as your web application layer that time you need to answer it is nothing but hypertext transfer protocol or http and this http provides you the architecture of client server model or client server architecture now what we are going to do in client server architecture just consider about this diagram here my pc is running on the firefox browser let's consider it as and one of the server uh, which is there in the apache web server and one more iphone is also running on the safari browser you can see there are three varieties two varieties browsers are there and one variety of your web server is present now you want to transfer the files from this firefox browser to safari browser how you are going to uh, send the files so now let's consider the first pc will be your client so you are going to send the uh, message so what it will do first it has to browse the request or receive the using your http protocol and then it will display you the web objects so first it has to send the request to the server always the clients always it has to any host it has to connect to your server first so here whenever it will get connect http request it has to send once the connections will be built up as i told you i used to tell you that when how we are going to send the request whenever we will send the request before that we need to send the handshaking signal once we will send a handshaking signal the server will be ready to accept your request if you are not going to send any kind of handshaking signal then server will not accept your request and all these things is going to be done by your sockets so i have already explained you the meaning of your socket in the last class here we are going to send the http request to the server once the server will uh, get this request it is going to send the response back towards this uh, uh, the host now what what it is going to do here you can see i have written client which is sending the request through your http protocol and the server what it is going to say uh, do it is going to send the response back but the question is what it is going to send whenever the request is going to send it has to send the request with the message that message what it will contain nothing but it is it, uh, this one will be your web objects and whenever the response is going to get back by the host it is also going to send all these things with your objects so the objects is going to transfer from one place to another place or from one client to server now moving to your uh, next uh, slide this is a continuation of your http overview here you can see http use tcp how http will use tcp i told you in the last class 
the connections whenever we are going to give in between your client to server the first thing it has to create the handshaking signal who will create this handshaking signal the tcp will create the handshaking signal through whom it is going to create the handshaking signal through sockets it is going to create the handshaking signal so whenever we will send any kind of http request to the server there will be the first work of the tcp who is going to build the connection in between the client and server so one socket will be there in the place of your http like sorry client side and one more socket will be there in uh, your server side so bo both the sockets has to be get connected before giving or sending any kind of your http request so here you can see the first point client initiates the tcp connections or creates the socket to the server whatever i told you just now it is nothing but it is going to send the it is going to initiate the connections and the port number is 80 it is a default port then what the server will do the server will accept the tcp connection from the client before sending any of the http request or receiving the response http response these two points has to work out once the connections will be built up next thing will be your http message which is going to work on your application layer protocol this message is going to exchange from the in between the variety of browsers any browser you are using uh, firefox safari chrome whatever you are using you are going to internet explorer anything whatever you are using you are going to send the message from one place to another place so here the when we are using the browser that will be through your http client from http client you are going to send to the server but in server you are going to utilize the web server because by sending the message to the server we are just utilizing the server here and we are going to send the message to our web server from web server again it is going to send back to your http client then the tcp connection will get closed once a message and request and response will get it back then automatically the tcp connection will get closed that's the reason the tcp is also known as connection oriented i told you in the last class the difference between tcp and udp tcp this is the reason why the tcp called as your connection oriented but in your udp that is known as your connection less so now next we will see slowly how we are going to utilize this tcp now once the connection will be built up and the message request and response will be done the tcp connection will get closed next this side you can see the http is also known as stateless on a nothing but baseless why it is because the server maintains no information about the past client request once the tcp connection will get closed before that what all are the things happened this information the server is not going to take care it will just automatically delete so now the protocols that maintain state are complex why it is see here you see the http is known as stateless because the server is not maintaining any kind of informations but if it will maintain the informations now what will be the problem that can be your complex situation it can create the complex situation so here the server and client can get crash also and their views of the state may be inconsistent or must be reconciled so what will happen in this case the server get crash uh, the server may get crash if they will keep all the data whatever uh, is present like the past histories and all if they will keep all these things so maybe the data values it can get crash so that's the reason the http maintains as stateless